What's going on, everyone? I hope you're having an awesome day so far, and welcome back to another episode of Chuck's Customs. If you've been following this project, then you already know what's going on. And if you're new, welcome! I highly suggest you check out the last few videos I've posted. That way you can catch up on everything that we've done to Bessie so far. If you don't have time for that though, that's okay. I'll fill you in real quick. In the last episode, we did a little bit of this. A little bit of this. And a little bit of this. And what we're left with is this. As you can see, we've got quite a lot done so far. But in this episode, we're going to be focusing on those little things that just kind of hold you up and no one really thinks about. So, let's get right to work. So when we set the engine down on the mounts, the suspension actually held surprisingly well. So that's awesome. But the motor mounts are kind of starting to sag. Now I know what I just said may sound a little weird, so let me show you what I mean here. So you see this rubber piece here in the center of the motor mount is supposed to be sitting about a half inch higher than it is right now. You can see that the weight of the motor, once we bolted the motor mount to this rubber piece in the middle of the mount, has actually caused it to slank down and sag down in the mount, which is therefore causing the whole engine to sit slightly cockeyed and it's causing this bar to sit super close to our oil pan which I really don't want I can barely fit my finger in there so yeah we need to fix that so if you've seen the episode of Hot Rod Garage where they put this same engine into an El Camino they actually addressed this problem before they even put the engine in the car which is what I wanted to do but I kind of got impatient and got carried away with just putting the engine in the truck. So now it's time to pay for my mistakes and do what they did in Hot Rod Garage, but this time with the engine already stalled. Let me clarify real quick. What they do in that video is they actually take, I think it was 3M brand uh, window welt urethane and they inject it into the empty spaces in the motor mount. And that's going to help stiffen up that rubber center and prevent it from moving around as you see ours have done. So I can't find the same stuff that they used, although I only went to one store. But I did find this. Personally, I've never actually used this stuff before, but I've heard that when it hardens, it's actually like a super, super durable rubber. It doesn't crack. It doesn't have much movement to it, but at the same time, it's got a little bit of flex. So basically, it's like rubber. We're just adding more rubber to the motor mount. So that way, the rubber doesn't move because the rubber is going to hold the rubber in place. Oh, either way, let's just, let's try it out. <laughs> So now that's in there, I made sure it had good squeeze through, so we got a nice, nice good injection of it on both sides of each motor mount. But I want to let it fully cure before I drop this motor back on top of it, so 
cure. Attack free in five hours or less. Full cure in seven days. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll uh, see you in seven days. I suppose. <laughs> uh, I think not. No, it hasn't been seven days. It's only been like three and a half at most. Let's see, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Either way, I'm not waiting seven days to work on Bessie. Come on. It's practically blasphemy. But I'm not dropping the engine back down on those mounts until it's solidified for seven days. I am following that rule. I have a tendency to cut corners here and there. I'm not going to do it on this project. But there's still plenty of other stuff that we can be doing in the meantime while we're waiting for it to dry. Like running fuel line, or running the transmission cooler lines, or finishing the brake lines, or... Let's not get too ahead of ourselves here. One thing at a time. Fuel line. Let's go. Fuel lines are done, strapped to the frame, good to go. So let's finish running that last little brake line to the rear axle and then we can move on to what's next. <laughs> injected the motor mounts with the mortar fix, we ran the brake lines, and we ran the fuel lines. Making progress. Now, let's see if we can handle getting this dipstick put back on the transmission. Alright, so it's sitting good right there. But as it comes up, it kind of protrudes into the cab a little bit. So we're going to find a way to push this over and get rid of this bracket here because it is right in the way. Well that ended quicker than I thought it would. I should have known better. And you probably saw it coming. I was trying to straighten out a 90 degree bend that was already in the dipstick tube and as you could probably guess I messed it up. So now I get to go to the store and try to find a tube that matches this one, buy it, cut this one right here, find a way to mate the new tube to this because I can't replicate that little tiny bend or this flare, and then figure out a way to fit that in the truck. We'll be good to go. But before we get to that, guys, it's been longer than seven days.
There was a reason I waited longer than seven days. Because when it said full cure for seven days, I figured that was probably just like a little bead or a little line of the stuff. Or maybe like a half inch wide by half inch. I don't know. But I don't think that they were counting on someone injecting a massive amount in one area. So I went ahead and made this little block of the same exact stuff. And as you can see, it's fully cured all the way through. And this stuff is strong. So I'm happy with that. So let's not waste any more time. We have a store to go to. Let's get this engine set back down and see the results. <laughs> So as you probably remember seeing in the beginning of the episode, I could barely fit my finger between this bar and the oil pan. So let's see how much clearance we have now. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Plenty of clearance for what we need. So I think it's safe to say I'm happy with those results. So I'm going to stop procrastinating and fix the dipstick situation. Let's go. anyone who's about to bend any kind of thin gauge tubing, you can actually fill it with sand and tape off both ends to make sure it doesn't kink wherever you're bending. Just got to make sure to wash it out really well when you're done. Back to it. say that looks downright nice. Well, that's going to be it for today's episode, everyone. If you stuck around this long, thank you for watching so much. I know this one was kind of a long one. It feels like we didn't really get much done. I mean, the truck doesn't even look any different. But it was all important stuff that needed to be done. I could say it's out of our hair. There's still a lot of little stuff that I have to do along the way, but I'll sprinkle those into another video. I'm sorry this one was so long and so boring, you guys, but... The next episode will be a lot better, I can guarantee it. But you're gonna have to subscribe in order to see it. So go ahead, hit the subscribe button. And as always, if you like what you saw, go ahead and show that thumbs up button some love. If you didn't like what you saw, or if you have suggestions for a future episode, please leave it in the comments section. I'd love to hear from you guys. So again guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again next time in another episode Chuck's Customs.